everybody yesterday we got a peek into the future because we have a new video by united we are interrupt your regularly scheduled scrolling with a united plane of the not so distant future the jet zero blended wing body aircraft can offer customers streamlined boarding, increased accessibility, roomier cabins, and dedicated overhead space for every seat. They're so fuel efficient that a flight from New York to Palma de Mallorca, Spain, could use up to 45 less fuel than the current white body aircraft flying that route. I don't know why it would take that random Palma de Mallorca route. We've entered into a conditional purchase agreement for up to 200 planes to join the United Fleet. Jet Zero expect test flight by 2027. Everybody, yes, United once again showing the future. I mean, they do that every few years or so. I mean, we remember in 2021, the United boom over shore marketing thing. And I mean, we have to say the supersonic plane of the future is starting to, you know, come somewhere. I mean, boom, at least they're doing test flights on their XB-1 right here. But yes, United takes a lot of pride in being involved in future airplanes. So let's take a look at this right here, a blended wing aircraft. People love it in the comments. Anything but paying your flight attendants for the whole time they're at work. Uh, amazing new concept, but they won't be taking off without your flight attendants. How about you give them a contract? Maybe pay your flight attendants a livable wage for Jesus. People don't care about the plane. Pay your flight attendants. Still no flight attendant contract, <laughs> but no contract for a flight attendant. <laughs> new planes have flight attendants still working on an expired contract. I didn't even know that. People. <laughs> <laughs> they should just turn off the comments at this point, yes. Welcome to talking about blended wing aircraft, which as you can see, we have a little bit of a model off here in the Microsoft Flight Sim, which is supposedly uh, gonna be like a 797. But this is kind of what blended wing aircraft look like. And let me tell you, they are a lot more aerodynamic of a design choice than your regular airplane that has a round fuselage and wings attached to it. Here, we're talking about a single unit, a very, very different design, which as United Airlines mentioned, only pretty much uses half of the drag. And this makes sense. I mean, look at most fish, like a Stingray, for example, that looks pretty much just like a blended wing aircraft or some of, you know, a very muscular bald eagle or something. Yes, we can learn a lot from animals that need to be aerodynamic or hydrodynamic. And it's the reason why some airplanes already look like fish like the A380. It's a design that just makes sense in terms of aerodynamics. But a very important topic is, of course, the realisticness of announcing such a plane. Why? Because people have been thinking of this blended wing design for over 100 years now. See, this is a very early design of a flying wing aircraft. You can see the fuselage also built into the wing. Now, now it had its first flight on the 9th of May in 1924, so over 100 years ago, and that was also its last flight as it crashed. Uh, a little bit of a design that comes close, and it's actually a passenger plane, was the Miles X, a blended fuselage wing aircraft. That was just a concept that never released. But yes, we've known for a long time that blended wing aircraft kind of makes sense. This is the Boeing X-48 that Boeing made to experiment around with this design. And I mean, look at this huge aircraft. See the size of it. Just kidding, it's a remote control airplane. It was around this big. But hey, it saved a lot of fuel. But after 2013, Boeing never really followed up with this airplane, never did anything with this design. Then there's also this, the Airbus blended wing body aircraft, which is kind of the same. I think it's called Maverick, and uh, it's just a render, I think, for which they also have this incredible RC model. Then there is Bombardiero Crocodile with the so-called Echo Jet, which also looks um, interesting. That one is a little bit more of a classic design, though. But then it's 2021 and the company of Jet Zero is started. And that's the one we're talking about today. They don't have a very long Wikipedia article. They have only ever also come up with renders and an RC plane. But apparently in just two years in 2027, we're going to see a full size demonstrator prototype flying, which is going to be very exciting. And maybe it's not going to happen. I'm not sure. You know, this is very interesting news because as I already mentioned, or at least tried to, we've known the idea of blended wing aircraft, but no one's ever done it. Why? It's, it's for a few reasons. It's just such a different airplane with such a different cabin. A normal airplane is long and round. And it's very easy to pressurize that kind of space. But when you're talking about such an open space, that is almost like a room, really. It's hard to keep that pressurized. I have no idea how you want to fly up at 30,000 feet and have a seal this good so that it's not always air running out, you know? We will have to see how structural stresses go. But what interests me most indeed is the cabin. And we already have kind of a mock-up of that. Here is 
what the cabin might look like. And we can see it is very, very wide. In fact, there are even, look, there's even like this partition here. So there are actual seats that do not have a access to a window at all. The only seats that do have windows are the ones in front, which is going to be very interesting. Here is some more of a render of the cabin. Indeed, we sort of have like a this is very futuristic here. This is probably not going to happen like that. Maybe it's like going to be like a screen here. That's like a camera that shows like the clouds outside. But look, we've got a very, very wide cabin that almost reminds me of one of those ferry boats here. You know, that have very, very wide cabins as well. You know, you can kind of fool people into thinking that's an airliner, which is obviously not. But this is what it could look like. I mean, it doesn't doesn't look bad. And I mean, the bigger space is nice for people who have claustrophobia on airplanes. Here's more of a picture here. Look at all those seats. 250 people can sit in this airplane. Oh, no, 232. Never mind. But that, that, let's talk about wide body aircraft right there. Talking about why also the wingspan of this airplane is quite large considering it only seats 230 to 50 people. This is a 767 with a wingspan of 156 feet and this is a wingspan of 200 feet. Um, now, this is still smaller than the A380 wingspan. But considering this is only transporting around 250 people, that also restricts this airplane into the airports it could fly to, potentially. But I don't think that will be a major factor. Anyway, here's a bit of a more of a cabin mock-up. Very, very wide indeed. And look at that bar. Talking about cabin problems, like how do you evacuate this plane quickly? In aviation, there's a rule to evacuate a cabin within 90 seconds. This is probably not going to happen here. Yes, according to Jet Zero here, and I think this is what this picture is trying to tell me, we only have like one emergency exit, unlike airplanes that we know that have, you know, lots of emergency exit over the wing, for example. That is very, very different here. Only one exit on this airplane. Yes, there's lots of unanswered questions here about these kind of designs. The truth is, passenger airlines are very conservative about how their airplanes look. The normal plane shape works well. And while this airplane uses drastically less fuel, you would need a whole different airport. Can you see the size of this thing? Boarding this plane is different. You'd need different pushback tugs, I reckon. Or maybe, maybe not, mate. Okay, actually, maybe not. In aviation, it's hard to make a drastic change. I don't even know how the passenger comfort on this thing is. By the way, this plane is broken and it's not taking off this flight sim model. I apologize. Maybe I can spawn it into midair. But hey, it uses less fuel. Look at that. It's very sleek looking. It is insane. You know, the truth is, it's not the 1950s anymore where it's like, oh, you want to build a supersonic plane? Let's do it then. But you know, all these new questions really only applies to civilian airlines, but not to military. Maybe use this plane as a cargo plane. And that is exactly the reason why the Jet Zero project is alive anyway. Because it is the US military that awarded a $235 million contract to Jet Zero for them to build their first airplane. And it kind of makes sense, that one. Because on a military airplane like that, you don't care about passenger comfort and how that's different. And also don't need to gain trust from like airlines or something like that. That's pretty cool. So what are your thoughts on a blended wing airliner? I'm very interested in seeing how that thing flies. So thank you guys so much for watching this video. And I'll see you guys tomorrow as always. Good night. And a special thanks goes out to my members, my supporters, <laughs> Guns Killer, R27, James Duram, That Dude, Anime Gods of Gaming, Derek, Insider Plane, Nishi Jitsu Finer, Professional Jamal, Ryland Williams, and New the York. You've got beautiful names.